Hey, it's been a while. Today we're going to talk about CPR. I've already talked about CPR in one of my videos and I assume you know how to do CPR. If you don't know how to do CPR, just watch that video. Why, why, why didn't you watch that video? I mean, are you new here? Did you subscribe to my channel? Now, if you haven't seen my video, it's going to be right here. Just press on this link, watch the CPR video. This is probably just a picture. I don't know if I could add a link in the middle of the, <laughs> in the middle of my videos on YouTube, but <laughs> if you could impress on it, it's going to be in my description or at the end of the video. Watch it. It's a pretty good video. You're going to know how to perform CPR, and if someone dies in front of you, you're going to be just fine. I'm sure that you've probably seen a lot of people performing CPR in movies or TV shows. They're probably always incorrect. We're going to talk about that in a different video, but in this video, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of CPR. We're going to understand CPR. Okay, we're going to talk about a lot of common questions like what if I what if I press too hard on the, on the person's chest and I break their ribs uh, why did we stop kissing during CPR and I'm so glad they stopped that and um, what else yeah why did we stop checking pulse during CPR and a lot of other questions if you have any just write them down below um, I got you I got you First things first, is there anything worse than being dead, medically speaking? I, I don't think so. If someone needs CPR, that means that they're, they're not breathing, they're, they probably don't have a pulse, so they're 95% they're dead, right? If you leave them alone, they're gonna stay dead. If you try to help them, even if it's wrong, even if you do the chest compressions in a wrong way, even if you don't have the perfect position, that's still better than doing nothing. Okay, there's nothing worse than being dead. I'm gonna make it so easy for you. If you see someone unconscious on the ground, check if they're breathing. If they're not breathing, you have to do two things, okay? Call 999, 911, 975, I don't know where you live. Call the ambience and then chest compressions. That's it, two things. They're not breathing, two things. Call the ambience, chest compressions. That's it, you don't need to kiss anyone. You don't need to check for a pulse, it's so easy. And you might, you might save someone's life just by doing this. Just, just by pushing on their chest, that's it. Now, according to the American Heart Association, about 90% of people who suffer out of the hospital cardiac arrest die. So CPR, especially if performed immediately, can double or triple the cardiac arrest victim's chance of survival. That's from the American Heart Association. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardio is the heart, pulmonary is the lungs, resuscitation is resuscitation. And CPR is designed to pump the heart and circulate the blood with oxygen to deliver it to your brain, okay? Until definitive treatment comes and, you know, they, they put two pads and they you know, shock the patient. And after we shock the patient, we hope that the heart restarts again and starts pumping again. So you pressing on the chest, you're doing the work of his heart. If you stop pressing on the chest, that means that the heart stops. So in other words, never leave the chest. If, you're, if, if you get so tired, switch with someone every two minutes, just switch. Just never ever leave the chest. So why do we stop checking for pulse? Why do we only look at the chest and check if the person is breathing or not? Because checking for pulse is not as easy as it looks like. I mean, yeah, you just put your, you stick your fingers in his neck and you just check for pulse, but that, I mean, even experienced paramedics or doctors, they get fooled sometimes. Sometimes you feel nothing, but there is an actual pulse. So the main idea is to simplify CPR for people who rarely use CPR. So what happened is that they simplified CPR and people got it and people memorized it and they performed more CPR and uh, survival rates went up, which is perfect. Now, why did we stop the kiss of life? Why did we stop blowing into the person's mouth for oxygen? Because it's gross. Now, if an adult has cardiac arrest, he collapses, he stops breathing, his blood is loaded with a lot of oxygen, but the problem is that there's nothing there's no pump, the heart isn't working. He needs you to push on the chest so you circulate the blood for oxygen to reach the brain. That's for adults, okay? Why is it only for adults? What about pediatrics? Pediatrics, they usually, they usually die because lack of oxygen. So they need oxygen. But for adults, they want chest compressions. 
more than oxygen. I'm not saying that they don't need oxygen, but for now, before the ambulance arrives, they need chest compressions. What if I'm performing CPR and I break the person's ribs? So what? Why would you worry about a broken bone that can heal? Just focus on the heart, okay? No one cares about the bones right now, focus on the heart. I don't think I've ever done CPR without breaking any ribs. It's so common. Breaking ribs is fine, okay? All we care about is the heart. Go ahead, break their ribs, and if they're lucky, they're gonna be around you tomorrow to thank you. Oh, I forgot. That's all I have for now. See you every second Wednesday. Goodbye. Subscribe and share. Follow Bandit with notifications and like, okay?